Now, we're going to jump ship and a big cheer for Toyota, the car company, beating Woke. Okay, all the ESG crowd is against them, and the stock is up 9% this week. I love that. Joining me on to talk about it is David Bonson, managing partner of Bonson Group, J.P. Morgan shareholder. So, David, oh, wait, author of There's No Free Lunch. He has a new book out. If you want to talk about it, feel free. Look at Toyota talking hybrids, and they're all jumping on them. The usual suspects, right, including CalPERS, California Public Employee Retirement, the New York City Pension Funds, uh, Glass Lewis, the advisory firm, the usual gang. Just because Mr. Toyota said he can have a hybrid and he recognized that there's a lot of people that don't want to give up their gas powered cars, David Bonson. So he's under attack. And guess what? The stock market is roaring. I love that. Yeah, well, he basically just said two points of truth that are not controversial. And if I were a radical environmentalist, I wouldn't disagree with what he said, that there are people who don't want to give up their cars. There's still a market for hybrid and some form of combustible engine. And he said that we don't have the ability to make all the battery powered cars. We can't make this many batteries to get to the quotas that they're trying to get to in time. So for the radical ESG people to be mad at him for just speaking the truth makes no sense because even if they agreed with him, um, all it's doing is basically telling people we're outside of reality. The ESG movement does not care about what is real. Well, since when has that crowd ever based anything on common sense or anything for that yeah. matter? I mean, look at the contrast. So they start picking on Toyota publicly. His stock goes up. Meanwhile, the woke crowd cheering madly uh, for, you know, the Budweiser beer, their stock crashes down. Target department store, their stock crashes down. One of the side themes here, David Bonson, is the marketplace is smart and the marketplace is really more important than government regulations. The marketplace will determine what consumers want and don't want. My economic mentor and hero, who I am talking to right now, <laughs> told me that profits, uh, profits are yes. the mother's milk. Ultimately, all of this woke stuff, all the ideology is irrelevant because through time, the great Benjamin Graham had taught us that what markets will weigh is earnings. And I think that that's the problem with the woke crowd, Larry, is that they sold something that isn't true, that people could buy virtue and buy feeling good about themselves at no cost. See, ultimately, there's a cost to what they're doing, and it is wor it's worse for profits, it's worse for the society at large, and the stock prices catch up with that eventually. Absolutely. Uh, that's so important. Uh, David, how goes your, shall I say, discussion with J.P. Morgan and some of their debanking uh, uh, allegations? Well, we've gone another week, and they haven't debanked any Christians or conservatives this week. So, so far, so good. Uh, <laughs> we still want people to be sharing. We want people to share with us any allegations. But my very firm belief is that Jamie Dimon's a pragmatic guy, that he and the Park Avenue C-suite got the memo. They knew that there were some bad actors that had done some things. They debanked our friend Sam Brownback. They got caught with their hand in the cookie jar. Uh, I think it was bad risk controls. But I don't think fundamentally they're out trying to go discriminate and hurt their business. But they didn't have any processes in case to keep it from happening. Woke 30-year-old bank managers were doing it. And that is now, I think, on its way to stopping entirely. All right. Good stuff. Consumer choice in the stock market reigns supreme. David Bonson reigns supreme. Thank you, sir. We'll talk soon. Stay